opinion didn't know what to do with the fact that they found 10 years worth of magazines, Playboy, Penthouse, Hustler, uh, at Neverland, which uh, would suggest that Michael Jackson was heterosexual and interested in seeing pictures of beautiful women who were naked. Uh, they weren't quite sure how to fit that into their theory that he was a pedophile. So they came up with the notion that a pedophile will take magazines like this to somehow groom the alleged victim. The district attorney showed so much pornography that you just, you know, you just, your head would, was spinning by the time this was over. It was the only day that Catherine excused herself from the courtroom for the afternoon. I thought they're constantly flashing this material at the jury, uh, which was a majority of females, by the way. I thought just was stupid, but that's what they did. They couldn't find any pornography on his computers. They had the FBI test every computer at Neverland. They couldn't find any kitty pornography. So they just tried to fit everything into their theory, and it just became an absurdity. You just knew that there was really something uh, devious going on. This guy, Thompson, was really out to get him. It had to be totally torture. I can imagine what was going on in his mind and his head, you know, and uh, he's not strong in that way at all. The stress and strain of this five-month trial uh, took a toll on him. You saw him losing weight. He was having trouble sleeping. I would talk to him at 3, 4, or 5 in the morning, and he would be terrified, particularly about what might happen to his children. He did need some, help, some things to help him fall asleep at night because there was no way he was sleeping with all this stuff going on in his head. I, I don't know how anyone could sleep. The thought that you might be found guilty and spend the rest of your life in a jail cell and all your accomplishments washed down the drain I don't know how he coped. Most people would have taken a gun to their head. His frame of mind was very, very fragile. And I was concerned for him. I was very worried about his children and his mother and what people would think. The first day of Gavin's testimony, Michael shows up and he's in pajamas. And he looked like he was in really bad shape. And they actually had to like help him into the courtroom. And from that moment on, everything started to get really awful. You started seeing Michael coming in every day looking like death. It was as if the testimony was just destroying him. To sit there in court and watch the legal system hurl absurd and vindictive and nasty, mean-spirited allegations at him like this uh, absolutely traumatized him. For me and for other people who actually knew Michael, this was a real human being whose life was being destroyed. And every day it just seemed to get worse. One of the sheriffs came to me and said, you know, you've got the best seat in the house. And I, was, and I said, well, why? And he said, because you're sitting right behind Michael. And when we find him guilty, we're going to get him out of there so fast that your head's going to spin. These, these people had already decided that Michael was guilty. And they were sure of it, so sure that they had an exit plan to get him out of there. Michael came into the courtroom and he looked like he was on serious drugs. He really, truly looked like a dead man walking. It was a tense moment. You know, the entire world stopped to watch what was going to happen to the best known celebrity, a uh, musical genius, Michael Jackson. That was such an awfully emotional day. You just didn't know what to expect.
We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of conspiracy as charged in count one of the indictment. The verdict was read and it was not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, all the way down the line, all counts not guilty. And I remember very specifically Michael seeming to not understand. And I remember Tom Snedden looking at Michael for a reaction and not really getting one. And I also remember Tom Mesero, his lawyer, leaning in and mouthing to Michael Jackson, you're a free man. I could read his lips because I was so close. And Michael still didn't get it. You felt like it was a triumphant moment, but then when you looked at him, you realized that he wasn't there for it. There was nothing you could do. He was so devastated that it had happened that you couldn't even find a place to be happy that it ended the way it did because it was so devastating that it had occurred at all. It's sad because I, I, I really feel that trial is what really depressed my brother out to the point where he just wasn't happy. He never went back to Neverland. For Michael not to go to Neverland, he must have been pretty sad. Didn't want to have nothing to do with that place ever again. He would always tell me, it's over. I don't trust anyone. I don't know why they're doing this to me. They want me dead. He said, they're going to kill me for what I got. I'm pretty sure there was times when he felt that, you know, I, I wish I was someone else or other than an entertainer. There's a certain point that you can get to with success, whereas you have no life whatsoever. You lose your ability to be a person. To be a person that cannot be a part of the everyday life of this world it could really be devastating on the mind. You can't get it all for free. And that's what happened with Michael. He just, he had to give up so much that he lost his ability to just walk amongst everyday people. This was the first artist that, that I've been associated with, and the only artist that I've been associated with that you could not walk down the street with look at my life as somewhat normal. It's not normal, but it's a little normal. But judging my life to his, his wasn't nowhere close. He just couldn't be anonymous. Impossible. Michael Jackson is proclaimed the king of pop. It's kind of hard being a king. You can get out of sorts. I think he kind of like isolated himself from everyone who would say no. Everything he wants is yes. Okay, Michael, I mean, it's, 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 it's hard to have someone there to, to give you an honest answer, an honest opinion. Joseph would always tell him, Michael, watch your people, Michael, watch your people. He said, I trust my people. My people are good people. But that's not, that's not the case. People smile in your face, pat you on the back, and stab you at the same time. These people saw money, and they saw somebody who they could get to. It was hard for Michael to say no as a kid and as an adult because he generated so much wealth and so much profit, he became the repeated target of unsavory characters, many of them mediocre, uh, who tried to get near him, promise him the moon, and then profit themselves by being around him. And I think he received some tremendously bad advice throughout his career when it came to finances. Michael was an easy touch, and anybody could take advantage of him just because he trusted everybody's word. 
Michael would bring random people into his life for business deals. They would offer him the world and Michael would believe them. Michael told me he only committed to 10 shows at the O2 Dome for his comeback concerts. When he found out that he was committed to 50 shows and there was no way of getting out of it, he snapped. He felt like they tricked him. He was put up against the wall and let down by people, or misled, I should say. It was thrown on him by his manager, and in his state of mind, he could have said yes to anything. After I heard that he was doing those many shows, I started calling and telling him. Then I heard how they were going to do them every other day, and I told him he couldn't do it that, but that way. He had to rest, and I kept after them. The wear and tear of all the managers and all the promises that they didn't live up to took its toll. Probably a more stronger person would be able to fight through a lot of that, and a lot of them have. Frank Sinatra, he was pursued the same way, but he seemed to be a person who could put people at bay. But it seemed like Michael has a certain type of frailty to himself and it wouldn't allow him to be very strong-minded or to be forceful with a lot of people. Everybody he met, he, he trusts them for some reason. And um, 